Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I am your host, Kristen, and my friends with AllFreeKnitting.com and I would like to present you with the Granny Round. This is a loom knit granny round. Uh, this is something that I have made up and I'll have the pattern posted on my site. I'm using three strands of a worsted weight. I have knit this up rather than making a crocheted granny square. I think this would be really fun uh, as a um, blanket all stitched together and kind of having the holes where the corners would meet and so it sort of make a sort of a four-pointed dime in there or you could make this in a cotton and make a pot holder. Today I'm going to use a 36 peg round loom, my knitting tool and a super bulky number six so I can use one strand so the super bulky number six yarn here and you can use three strands this is a red heart um, of a worsted weight before we get started I'd like to show you that you can produce several of these quickly and in order to do so we're going to be decreasing later so what I want to do is mark every sixth one of my pegs I'm going to end up dividing this whole loom it's 36 pegs I'm going to divide it into six sections of six so six times six is 36 so on the first of each six I'm going to put some kind of a, a peg marker right now I'm just using some little colored child rubber bands for hair because <laughs> that's what I had handy and uh, you may not be able to see them as well on my film but that's what I'm using I'm just um, saying if you want to put like an earring or a piece of tape down here or something but that will help you uh, do it very quickly so if you'll mark uh, see so we're gonna start this is one two three four five six and then put another one on the next one and go along and we'll meet back up we're gonna make a slip knot Go ahead and leave a generous tail on here and uh, the reason why is if you want to end up stitching this uh, together later with some more you can use that to put them together. We'll put this slip knot on here, put the tail on the inside and we're going to do an e-wrap cast on. Wind your way all the way around in an e-wrap fashion and then wind it around again and come back. We've come back to our starting peg and now we're going to knit off. If you've done the three strands, make sure and obviously lift all three of the bottom strands over the top three strands. With this bulky six, it almost looks like three strands on top of it. So you want to make sure you're getting all of those and not also, also not grabbing uh, this top. We finished our cast on row. Normally I'd say push them down, but we're actually going to flip this over and purl. Put your working strand in front. Pull down. I go down and pull up. Put the new loop on. So purl by picking up the bottom working strand, pulling it through, take it off, the loop off of the peg and pull the new. Continue purling all the way around one row. Now that you've got your purl row on, go ahead and push everything down and we're going to e-wrap three more rows after you've e-wrapped this row and knit over then complete two more rows after that and we'll meet back up as I'm finishing up my third row here which actually should be your fifth row total I am reminding myself I should have said on the third row of your e-wrap 
be sure and make it loose because we're going to start decreasing and when we decrease uh, you're going to need a little bit more slack in your yarn so if you have not done that yet go ahead because I've skipped along in the tutorial so sh you if you're watching along you probably haven't done that row yet um, but go ahead and um, when you start wrapping your third row uh, make sure that it's fairly loose I've done mine a little tight here so you may see me struggle a little bit okay so I've got my beginning row I had my pearl and then three rows of e-wrap and now we're gonna start decreasing and it doesn't look like a circle yet but I promise it's actually gonna shrink up so you can see how this one shrunk up <clears throat> we're gonna go from our number one all the ones that have these uh, rubber bands we're gonna go to the left <clears throat> and move the second peg over to the first peg so go ahead and move that over and again you can see this marking number one and move it over just um, you can untwist it, it doesn't have to be uh, twisted. You can go ahead and knit them over while you're doing it or come back and do it. Um, I usually come back so I know that I did all of them. Okay, go ahead and knit over. And now that we have knit those over, what we're going to do is wrap all the remaining pegs that have yarn on them. Like this. Skip. Finish wrapping those pegs and knit over and join me back up. I'm going to start our second row. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and on the fourth peg, move that over to the third. You can knit over at this time if it's easier. Move on to your next set. Go from three, four to three. Go all the way around the loom. After you've completed going from four to three, go ahead and wrap the remaining pegs, skipping the ones that don't have yarn, and knit over. After knitting over and pushing down all your rows, we're going to go from six to five so go all the way down this is going to be the one before all these markers moving six to the five peg knit off move down to the next one yeah, just completed my last six to five and I'm going to wrap the remaining pegs and knit off as we've done on the last three decreased rows I have completed my last row. What I want to do now is take my working strand, leave it attached. I'm going to wrap around my loom two times. Make sure I have plenty of yarn. 
take my scissors and cut and let this that hang loose now I'm going to take my working strand and uh, act like I'm going to do a purl so I'm just going to take my uh, loom knitting tool pull this working yarn up and all the way out move on to the next peg and do the same thing so instead of using a tapestry needle we're just going to use one tool continue working your way around the loom and meet back up at the end. I've come to the end here. I finished and I haven't quite connected this last peg. This was the starting one that it came out of. Go ahead and put it through and then we're going to take this off of the loom. Go ahead and pull all of your um, all of your pegs. Um, pull all the yarn off the pegs. Just want to show you what this looks like. It, it's kind of funny. It looks like a little bit of a collar, which you could do, but uh, if you see it, it looks like you've kind of decreased these rows. You made these little tree sort of looking things, and then your um, your rows in here have this wide area. So what we're going to do is pull on this strand, and then it's going to slowly form our circle. Just real gentle. I like to kind of lay it down flat for a moment and kind of mess with it and pull on that. If you see you have this nice circle, um, you could do any stitches here in these three stitches and then you have uh, your decreased uh, stitches here to make it flat. Um, this would be nice in a seed stitch or just uh, do a garter continue this um, knit purl uh, right here. But uh, this is just how I happen to make it. But the decrease is what makes this so flat. Uh, and this is for this particular loom. So just cut this off. Weave, weave this in. Uh, make sure and, and make it snug. And you have got yourself a granny round. And like I said, you could stitch these together and make... A nice funky blanket. Um, you could use it as a base for a bag or really anything or like I said do a pot holder. So thank you so much for tuning in to Good Knit Kisses. Again I am Kristen and thank you again for my friends at allfreeknitting.com and you guys have a great week. Happy looming! Mm -hmm.